Hello, everybody. Welcome to your very favorite Bronze Age comic book podcast, Flea Market Fantasy. I'm your co-host, Mike Allen. As always, I'm joined by... Michael Dell of the LCS Hockey Radio Show. Woo, that's right. And this week, it is your pick. Why don't you tell everybody what we are reviewing? The Savage She-Hulk, issue 19 from 1981. And why did you pick number 19? Uh, well, that's my hockey number. Uh, <laughs> but, gotcha. but I also picked it because uh, the cover is interesting. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about the cover. <laughs> really? It's a weird design. <laughs> I don't okay, know. I can just say that, as you know, I create the thumbnails for the show, and this cover was the hardest one to create a thumbnail for. <laughs> yes. Because sometimes when I when I uh, pick a cover, I like to think of things that will screw up Mike L, and he's making the thumbnail. <laughs> and I figured out, I, wanted, I wanted to see how he would handle this one. So uh, we'll talk easy. about that. Yeah. But yeah, She-Hulk. Uh, do you have any experience with the She-Hulk, Mike L? Well, I mean, when I was a kid, she was in Fantastic Four. And then she got her own series, right? Where she was a lawyer and breaking the fourth wall and all funny. And I read that, and that was okay. And then, uh, then I read yeah, that was a couple... That was her second series. Yeah, that was her second series. It was called Sensational She-Hulk. And then I read a couple issues of the, what's his name, Dan Slot series that was good. But that's all I pretty much know of her. But I've always liked her. I thought she's cool, you know? Yeah, I never really read much uh, She-Hulk. Uh, I just saw her in the Avengers a couple times. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. But it's She-Hulk. <laughs> her own name is Jennifer Walters. And her first appearance was in The Savage She-Hulk number 1, 1980. Right. And, uh, yeah, so that's the series we're reading here today, and that was her uh, first series. And she was created by Stan Lee and John Buscema. And Jennifer Walters is a defense attorney who claimed to have evidence against a crime boss named Nicholas Trask. Trask had her shot, but her cousin, Michael, you know who her cousin is? Yes, Bruce Banner. <laughs> that's right. Her cousin gave her a blood transfusion to save her life. And that's how she became the She-Hulk. So it's a lot like the wizard getting the mongoose blood. Uh, she got the Hulk blood. Right. And boom. Now she's She-Hulk. So she turns into the She-Hulk and she beats up those Trask dudes. Because he sent them to kill her again and she beat them up. And she decided she will dedicate you know, her uh, Hulk existence to uh, getting all the criminals she couldn't get as an attorney. You know? so she's right, right. But the big difference between the Hulk and She-Hulk, um, well, the vagina... But other than that, <laughs> uh, She-Hulk maintains her like her smarts. Right, she right, right. Dopey, and she's still Jennifer Walters, but maybe like a more uh, like uh, loose. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, aggressive. The, aggressive. Or... Yeah, like all like all her emotions are amped up a little bit. Mm, okay, you know? but it's still her. You know what I mean? It's not like she yeah. loses. Uh, it's not like two. It's kind of two distinct people, but not really. Mm -hmm. That makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, Stan Lee uh, created this uh, here She-Hulk character because he was afraid that the executive producer of the Hulk TV show, a fellow named Kenneth Johnson, would introduce a female version of the Hulk. Mm -hmm. So because this Kenneth Johnson guy was also the uh, producer of million dollar of uh, the six million dollar man, and he spun the Bionic Woman off of that show. Yep, and I'm a big fan of Kenneth Johnson. Shout out to Kenneth Johnson. <laughs> wow, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Lindsay Wagner. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, Stanley says, hey, we better not let him do that. Because once the Hulk, because I, I think Bionic Woman came out maybe 78 around there. So she had been out for like a year or so. But I guess Stanley wasn't sure if the Hulk show was going to be successful yet. Because I think that also came out around the same time. Uh, I think it was 78 to 82. Mm -hmm. So... But once it looked like the Hulk series was going to be successful, he's like, oh, we better come up with a She-Hulk, you know? Cause that right. Was, uh, because Kenneth Johnson, he came up with the Bionic Woman, so he owned the rights. Ah, gotcha. Not okay. the person who came up with the $6 million man, even though it spun off the $6 million man. So Stan Lee's like, hey, if they're spinning something off of this, we got to own the rights. So mm -hmm. that's how he came up with the She-Hulk. And uh, they, they created it pretty quickly there. And the uh, first issue of She-Hulk was published in February of 1980. Now, wasn't that drawn over a weekend, or am I am I mixing that it's, up with uh, Spider Woman number one? I, there were uh, talks that it was put together very quickly. Okay, so it's a uh, I don't know if it was a weekend or not, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> issue one was Stanley and John Buscema, but then every issue after that was written by David Kraft and drawn by Mike Vosberg. Right, right. And we'll talk about them later. And the series lasted for twenty five issues. Mm. 
25 issues. So then uh, She Hulk joined the Avengers because the, her series ended in uh, 82. So then she joined the Avengers in issue 221 in 1982. And she also joined the Fantastic Four then in issue 265 in 1984. Right. And why did she join the Fantastic Four, Michael? Well, I believe it was because the thing, when he went to the Beyonders Battle World in Secret Wars, he, the thing decided to stay there. I can't remember why, though. Was it because he couldn't uh, change back or something? Yeah, because the, he, he had turned back to Ben Grimm, his human form, and he wanted to oh, stay that way. Oh, right, right. Okay. Little, but he had a little gizmo that he could get back whenever he wanted. But okay. He just wanted to, so, yeah, they needed some muscle. So, uh, She-Hulk stepped in and filled the void. Uh, she was also a member of the Defenders. Heroes for Hire. Shield and something called Fantastic Force. Oh, I remember that. That was yeah. Uh, I don't. I had to look Marvel's, it up. Yeah, it was their attempt to like mimic like the image thing, like you know, Force Works and Cyber Force and all that stuff. That's what that was supposed to be. From what I read, it seemed like there was rumors going around that Fantastic Four was going to be canceled and rebooted as Fantastic Force, but it was just like a rumor. Right. And then they, they heard it, and they're like, oh, let's just use that name. And they created a new team called Fantastic Force. <laughs> That's where all their good ideas come from. Yeah. Like just rumors. Just rumors. Mm. And innuendo. All right. In 1985, John Byrne, everybody's favorite, John Byrne. Uh, he, did a, he did a sensational She-Hulk graphic novel. Right. That was called Sensational She-Hulk. So then in 1989, uh, as we mentioned earlier, she got her second series, and it borrowed the name from the graphic novel, and it was called The Sensational She-Hulk. And this was also John Byrne writing and drawing. And it lasted 60 issues, ending in right. 1994. But he now, left after eight issues, right? Kurt, well, he did uh, the first eight. Then he, uh, he came back and he ended up doing 27 of the 60. Mm, okay. But he left after the first eight because he had uh, arguments with editorial about uh, the direction of the series. And I guess there's also a She-Hulk two-issue limited series called She-Hulk ceremony maybe ceremony right yep and i guess he didn't want to have anything to do with that like he didn't want his storyline to play in with that or something or they're arguing about right. it so, uh he left but he did come back and uh <laughs> yeah. at, at the time though when she hulk ended it was the longest running superheroine book in marvel history at 60 issues whoa now it's 60 said at issues the time, just like quasar anyway oh, go ahead yeah uh, so it said at the time. So what superheroine book has surpassed that since? You asking me? Yeah. Well, do you know? I don't know. Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe Captain Marvel with like Carol Danvers. I have no idea. Yeah. Well, they, they always rebeat those. Like they always yeah. start them up like every year or so. They do That's a different true. one. So I don't know what. I don't know if anything's lasted longer, huh? I don't know. All right. So uh, after that, she has had countless series since. Like way too many to count. <laughs> so I just skipped them, right? But they're but they're always like short, brief things. You know what I mean? Like just limited series or short runs. And did you know that She Hulk is getting her own TV show, Michael? I think I knew that. Yeah, it's coming out soon, right? I think next year on the Disney Plus. Huh? But it's uh, they've already got the actress and everything. It's that girl from uh, from Orphan Black, right? Tatiana yeah, Mislani or something like that. Right. Sound right? Yeah. Looking her up right now. Yeah, it looks good. So that's something. She Hulk getting her own TV show. Yeah. that. Um all right, so uh that's all the She Hulk background I think we have here. Um <laughs> any any other memorable She Hulk moments for you, Micah? Uh not really. I mean I do know that I got excited about well, like when John Byrne left, like I, when John Byrne left, I was a fan of John Byrne, so I didn't like that. But then years went by, and I, I didn't, and I, I became a fan of Steve Gerber, and I found out he actually took She Hulk over after John Byrne left. And so, wow. yeah, I went back and dug up all those issues and read them, and they were terrible. So I sold them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, Mike Hell, uh, since you like the uh, Steve Gerber, there is a character in this book that we are reading today that is based on Steve Gerber. Get out of town, really. Steve Gerber created the character, and he based him on himself. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. Maybe okay. we'll get we'll See if I can figure out there. who it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, I guess that's about it. As we mentioned, the uh, creators here, David Kraft and Mike Vosberg, we'll talk about them afterward. But uh, you ready to get into the big book, Michael? Sure. Whew. 
Ooh, Savage She-Hulk, number 19, 50 cents, 1981. Got the Marvel Comics group ribbon at the top. We got the corner box here with a savage-looking She-Hulk. That is not John Byrne's She-Hulk. That's a different-looking She-Hulk. That's John Buscema. That's yeah, cool. oh, there you go, right there. Yeah, I read number one. It was actually really good. Well, fairly good. I liked it. By the way, we, we always like to, uh, you know, not always criticize John Byrne, but... Uh, uh, listen, I love John Byrne until we started doing this podcast, and then you told me all these horrible things about him. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then we encountered some John Byrne later work where he, he, it clearly he's just phoning it in, you know? Right. But but if you go back to his sensational She-Hulk stuff, it's very good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yep, yep. There's, especially his first eight issues. It's yeah. It's real stuff. So, yeah, and then you, it's funny, though, because you can see the difference when he comes back with number 30 or whatever it is. You can see the difference already, right, in his style. Oh, I don't know. I just looked at the, wow. uh, the early ones again, and I was like, okay. oh, yeah, this is good stuff. Because okay. um, he drew her, like, very... Uh, tr uh, well, we'll talk about how Vosberg draws her. But I <laughs> burned her, like, very... F more feminine and, and uh, like, sexy She-Hulk. Right, as all women should be, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. There we go. Uh, Marvel Comics group, yeah, Savage She-Hulk, uh, number 19 mm -hmm. and 50 cents. And you said the John B. Seema corner box there. So, all right, describe this cover for the kids, though, Michael, because this is an interesting design. Is it? Okay. So, it's a split cover. So, yes. there's a big black bar that's di bisecting this cover in two at an angle, almost a 45-degree angle. And it says, double trouble for the She-Hulk. Don't miss designer jeans. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even read that until now. Anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, de designer jeans with a G. Right, right, yeah, right. Play on words. And by the way, the double trouble is in like pink. Right. The She-Hulk is in green and the designer jeans is in blue. Right. And right. the other words are in white. And yes. It's very weird. But <laughs> yeah, it is weird. Uh, so the top cover, we got She-Hulk encased in ice or whatever that is. Yeah, it looks like ice, but we find out later it's like silicon or something. Right. Like and she's sort of breaking out of it. And then above her are some scientists pointing at her and shouting. And then the bottom half of the cover is her fighting this, like, monster that she fights in the issue. And, like, putting her hand through the monster and it coming out his back. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and yeah. her foot, her leg is going through his body as well. Well, yeah, it's not going through his body. Well, it's stuck in his body. It's ah, sticking out, but it's still okay. encased in his body where her Gosh. fist is, like, going through the body. But, yeah, he kind of looks like a, uh, a uh, I was going to say the Pillsbury Doughboy or, like, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Like, a big white um, gray blob of a guy right she's fighting them but uh and, and she's dressed like her costume is pretty much just a tattered shirt <laughs> yes it sure is yep that's pretty much it this uh, cover yeah so it's drawn by mike vosberg who i guess are we gonna talk about him later yeah and it's inked by al milgram who we all know right al milgram sure. yeah it's not very well drawn, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's okay. It's quick. It seems like he was hurried. <laughs> yes. He was rushed. You could say that, yep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, how do you feel about this design? How do you feel like splitting covers like this? Ooh. This seems like something DC would do. Does DC do this a lot? <laughs> not, I mean, not really. Not especially. I really uh, don't like it. Um, yeah, it's honest. weird. Yeah. I don't like it either. <laughs> like, even if it was... If it was split down the middle, that would be better to me. But just the angle really kills the design for me because it's hard to have to give both both you know parts a chance. It almost makes it seem like there's two stories in this one book. Right, but there's not. No. <laughs> and no, it's not like two, and it's uh, yeah, like, these are two scenes coming from the same story. Right, or if it was like two characters, but it's not. It's the same character. And and the top portion of the cover is like colored in blue. And like purplish blue and stuff, and in the bottom it's like orange and yellow, so it's very contrasting color wise. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. That's 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 well thought out, more well thought out than the cover itself, I think. <laughs> so I, I don't yeah. know, but uh, so there you go, the cover for Savage Hulk nineteen. Right. All right. So let's get so, in. So crack it open here, um, and we've got uh, Jennifer Walter. Well, actually, She Hulk waking up in bed in her pajamas that are torn. And she is surprised that she's not waking up as Jennifer Walters because she went to bed as Jennifer Walters. Yep. So she's like, she's like, what's going on here? And then she's like, it can't be. The changes don't happen like that anymore. Michael Morbius cured me. And then it says, Hey, hey well, Michael, Michael, tell the kids who Michael Morbius is. Ah, uh, Michael Morbius is Morbius. 
<laughs> yeah, but tell them who that is. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, the only thing I really know about him is he's a vampire. That's it. And he's coming to a movie theater near you soon, right? Really? Oh, Jared, a movie? J- Jared oh, Leto. Cool. Yep. Wow, they are just scraping deep for all the comic book characters at this point, huh? Yeah. Like in 2000, Michael, if I told you one day they're going to be making a Morbius movie. <laughs> like, I know, especially a Morbius movie before they make like a Submariner movie. Like, come on. It's, it's crazy. Anyway. Yeah, but Morbius is that goofy uh, vampire in, uh, uh, he's in The Amazing Spider-Man a lot. Right, right, right. Like, I guess they couldn't, remember the comic book codes? They said they couldn't have vampires. So he was a living vampire. <laughs> that's right. Head. That's right. Yeah. So that's how they got around that little loophole. But yeah, so he was always an amazing Spider-Man stuff. Yeah. So he's the guy that supposedly cured She-Hulk, but he didn't. So mm-hmm. There we are. <sighs> so yeah. Oh yeah. So anyway, so she's uh, all upset. So she goes and smashes her mirror. And she's like, what is going on? She's like, I gotta get to the bottom of this. She's like, I'm the She-Hulk now. It's better that way. I don't need Jen. I sure don't need her problems. So, yeah, she is talking about Jennifer Walters as a separate person, even though they kind of but, have the same personality. But she is, but she still is Jen. She's like talking about herself in third person. Because yeah, later I mean, on, I, I do that all weird, the time. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't need Mike L's problems. Fuck him. Yeah, because at first I thought, like, she has no memory, like a Jekyll and Hyde mm-hmm. situation, like... You know, like no, con- but it becomes clear. I think the more you read that, yeah, she's still Jen Walters, but she, she doesn't like that other version of herself. So she talks right. about it like third person. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, so this is a weird scene. So then we have this other guy. I'm gonna assume this is Steve Gerber. Nope. Oh, this, oh. this fella, this character is named Daniel Ridge Jr., nicknamed Zapper. Okay, and okay. He was a childhood neighbor in the, and he later becomes a boyfriend of the Savage She Hulk. Oh. But he was a childhood neighbor of Jennifer Walters. And uh, his first appearance was Savage She Hulk 2, and he was created by Kraft and Vosberg. And for those who don't see the issue, he kind of looks like Gabe Kaplan from Welcome Back, Cotter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's got the afro and the mustache. So, yeah. Yeah. But he's a white fella. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. So he comes out, he's coming out of his house. Yes, because they're he's neighbors. With right. Us. So he's like, yeah, he's like narrating in his head. He's like, what am I supposed to do? I'm a medical student. I'm supposed to care about mankind. Ralphie wants me to bring him the She-Hulk because they want to study her genetic structure. Supposedly, her mutated cells could give them the key to a cure for cancer. And then just coincidentally, She-Hulk pulls up in a car. Or What kind of car is this? It's a little dune buggy. Yeah, a little dune buggy thing. Well, so, they're, well they, they're friends. Like they, yeah, like yeah. He, he's the only person that knows she's She-Hulk and Jen Walters. Ah, okay. So, and when she's She-Hulk, he's her boyfriend. Ah, gotcha. But when she's Jen Walters, she has another boyfriend. Come on. Yeah. So, so that's why when she's She-Hulk, when, when she flipped out in her bedroom, like, all right, I'm just going to be She-Hulk from now on. She's like, she wants to get Zapper and go have fun at the beach or whatever. You know, she's like, let's ah. just tear it up. So she's That's grabbing him and taking him to the beach to go have fun. So, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So then we cut over to. Uh, oh yeah. So this is. Uh, so this is uh, Jennifer Walters' father, Morris Walters. Yes. And this guy seems like a dick. Yep. Total dick. Sheriff of Los Angeles. And he's yelling at this guy. Now is this guy Steve Gerber? No. Okay. I want to keep guessing. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so he's like had enough of his daughter and blah blah blah, and he's like. Uh, Jenny's gone too far this time. She canceled her payment on the family house, which she agreed to buy for me. You'd think she, she would have at least not notified me, but no, not a word. And then, and then she's like, and then, so basically, uh, she's all mad. So she's like, uh, Buck, I want the DA's office to institute legal action. Maybe you can get her disbarred. I don't care what you do. I mean, yeah, this guy seems to be overreacting a little bit, right? Yeah. Her dad seems like an asshole. And, uh, apparently her mother died when she was a young girl. Mm-hmm. And she died in a car wreck while she was driving to see Jennifer in one of her dance recitals. Oh, sad. So, so now I guess that's another reason why the father hates her. <laughs> like the father's <laughs> always hated Jennifer. Blaming the fact her. Right? Life, Blaming the yeah, I, I think. So I don't know. I think that's an, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on here with this Walters family. But this Buck fella, he works for the, her dad. He, he, I'm trying to remember this. I think he was responsible for another woman dying because he tried to, he thought that She-Hulk was trying to kill this woman, but the She-Hulk was trying to save her. 
And so then he screwed it up, and then he's responsible for this woman dying. So he has all that internal stuff going on. I don't know. That, gets huh. that happened way back in like issue three. So, hmm. But yeah, this guy's name is Buck something. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, she, Steve Gerber. No, okay. So she wants this orange, this guy with the orange suit to run her out of town. Yeah, that's Buck. Yeah. Right, Buck. So then we cut over. So then Buck goes home to his parents. Uh, they all live together. Yeah, they all live together. This gigantic house. And, uh, oh, I you think know. this Buck guy, he might be the assistant district attorney, right? Isn't that what it says? Mm-hmm. Yeah, as assistant yep. district attorney, his job, yeah. And yeah, he still lives with the parents. How nice. Yeah, kind of strange. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> so he goes home and he's like chatting with his mom and dad. Hello, Buck, you're home early. Yeah, or got an important case to prepare. So, yeah, he's thinking about how he can uh, disbar She Hulk, Jennifer Walters, right? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. So then we cut back over to She-Hulk and uh, Zapper. And they're driving to the university, right? Because he's been uh, tasked with basically kidnapping her and bringing her in to study. Yeah, he tells her they're still going to the beach, but he just has to stop off to pick something up. But he tricks her because he brings her into this little garage thing and then they release this gas and it knocks her out. Yeah, like what an asshole this guy is. Yeah, eh? And then we get some nice caricatures on the next page of these weird looking fellers probably all based on marvel <laughs> staffers but uh yeah it's very cartoony are the faces here right right and so yeah they're watching from like you know a tv monitor or whatever now is one of these guys steve gerber or gerber nope okay so then they're they're talking about you know how, how what they're going to do with her and blah 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 and they cut over and now they've got her encased in this it's not ice what did you say it is it's a dry, cold, bonded oh, silicone. Right. Forms an inescapable cocoon around her, cause, right. preventing her from re- reverting to her human form. Right. But as you'll soon see, I have far from amazing. My monitors indicate she's regaining consciousness despite both the exposure to the gas and the intense cold. Dad, where? Uh oh. But they're wrong. She Hulk smashes out of it, right? Yeah. I, I really like that panel of her waking up, though. That's a good shot of her face. Yeah, it is good. There, there's some good art in here, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so she smashes out of it, but her legs are still bound by this, like, metal, you know, clamp. Yeah, she's, like, trapped in, like, two big metal ski boots. Right, exactly. And, uh, but she's, like, <laughs> then what does she do? She's, like, spinning? She's, well, like, well, oh, they it's start... spinning her, right? Yeah, they're spinning her to keep her from getting out. Right, right, right. She's like spinning me at a deadly speed, disorientate and disorient. Dis- I can't pronounce that word. Disorienting me. <laughs> yes. Worse, the centrifugal force feels like it's tearing my insides out. Even a she-hulk can't take much more. So then, as she's spinning around, she grabs onto like the machine above her, and it tears it all apart because she's being spun so fast. Yeah. So then she's like, "Now someone's gonna pay dearly for this." She looks up and she sees. Uh oh, she sees Zapper. Right. Uh, she doesn't see Zapper. She sees those two scientists. Oh, okay. Yeah, Zapper's Doc, not she there. Sees us. She's free. Okay. So then we cut back over to Jennifer Walter's father, and she's with like, or he's with like her new, his new like girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. And uh, you know, he's on the. Fo- he's like, maybe I can still talk some sense into Jenny. At least you know, I at least owe it to her to try. So he's like trying to call her, but he can't get through. So, so, he, so he leaves a message. Jenny, this is your father. I'm not taking this any longer. I'm not going to the DA or anyone else. We'll handle this between us, and you'll be very sorry for what you've done. And then the girlfriend's like, and I'll be very happy. So she's manipulating things behind the scenes. She's happy about it. Yeah, I, I forget her story, but later on she comes out to be like a, an evil lady. Right. She to get She-Hulk, but I can't remember why. But. Right. It's funny because just yesterday on SpiderCast we reviewed um, – our friend Murad, he'd never read an 80s comic in his life, ever. What? He, but he re- yeah, but he re- he's been reading comics for 20 years, but he's never read a comic from the 80s. And so he was shocked that, you know, the, these, uh, you know the Marvel-style narration where they're like, with that ominous bit of business out of the way, it's back yeah. to the show. He had no clue. He's like, what is this? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm like, all Marvel comics are like this. They're always, they're always like calling attention to like you know interlude you know <laughs> now we're gonna cut over to the scene okay back to the action guys you know they always yeah. do that but anyway so yeah so so then it's like so then the narration's like you've been warned from here on in pilgrim you're on your own 
<laughs> and so the two scientists are like, do something, Doc. All that punishment has slowed her down, but not for long. Calm yourself. So the other guy's A-OK. -okay. He's getting this needle ready to inject her with something. And meanwhile, she's picking up like this piece of machinery and throwing it at the window, smashing through. She jumps up. But then, uh-oh, looks like this guy's injected himself. And he's turning. No, 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 no. What? He injected, he injected the other guy. Oh, he injected the other guy. Oh, right, yeah. right. I missed that. And this guy turns into the monster that we see on the cover. Yeah. So he's like, hey, here, here you go, sucker. Turn into a monster and fight She-Hulk while I get out of here. You right. So. so then he's like, you wanted to answer She-Hulk? Then observe. My experiments with mutation and gene coding have been quite successful. So we see this big hulking monster. Uh, bigger than She-Hulk, all yellow. But right now we don't know his deal. We just know he's a big guy. So she yeah, he's, he's like bald. He, he just looks like a big bald sumo wrestler, kind of. Right. So she jumps towards him and punches him. She's like, no, my fist sunk right into him. But he's still changing, transforming, growing. So then she... Oh, hey, hey, by the way, Michael, uh, after he, she punches him the first time, the second, on the next page, she cracks him in the jaw. And do you see that si sound effect, Cham? Cham, yeah. That's the, na that's the name of my fantasy football team. <laughs> why why <laughs> it's just it's an old mr show reference do you ever watch mr show no i don't know what that is all right never mind <laughs> no nope bob never heard of it. and david cross it was a sketch comedy no. show in the 90s all right <sighs> but that's the first time i've ever seen cham and, and huh. used as a sound effect but yeah sorry i'm reading up on this now no i never heard of it interesting <laughs> sarah silverman i like her anyway okay so yeah cham so then, uh, so then the monster's like, girl hurt, not like yeah. her. Don't know why I hate girl, don't care. Girl must die. Good dialogue here. So then she, uh, <laughs> so he flips her over and like tosses her aside and she smashes up against the chair. And, uh, and then she runs back and like tries to like clock him in the jaw. He's like, hold it, his skin just changed. My legs sunk in and I can't pull it out. He's absorbing me. He's actually swallowing me up inside of him. Girls struggle, but get free, but not get free. And he be, he's basically like completely enveloped her into his body. Yeah, she's inside his chest now. Right. And when the when the final panel on that page, she Hulk die. Right. That's a good way to end a page. Right. <laughs> but then, no, can't be. She Hulk try get out, and so she basically <laughs> smashes her way out of his body. Yeah. And he's. It, it's hard to describe. It's only, yeah, he's basically made of, like, putty. Yeah. Looks like. So, yeah, he kind of, like, breaks apart. Never! His body is no longer like flesh. It's like some sort of plastic compound. It's like tearing apart someone made of Play-Doh. There you go, Play-Doh. So, yeah, he's basically just a big, there's a big pile of Play-Doh, like, all these little piles of Play-Doh spread out. And she starts to walk away, but then, feeling, uh, she senses correctly that there's no sense. <laughs> That's bad. And looking for the doctor... She turns without further thought and leaves, failing to notice that the organic com compound on the floor has begun to shift and change and grow. And, yes. like, the Play-Doh's moving now, right? Yeah, spoiler alert, that guy comes back a few issues later. So. Thought so. Yeah. So, basically, now she's, uh, she's still in the university, but she's... No, no, like, no, she, gets, she goes back to her house. She's going into her back. Oh, yeah, that's house. what I thought. It looked like her house. She is home. All right. So, then she goes inside... And she's standing uh, in front of the window, and then she changes back into Jennifer Walters. But lo and behold, someone's there behind her. Maybe yep. you could use a little help, or at least a friendly cup of coffee. She's like, who? Richard, you saw. Wait, is this Steve Gerber? This is Steve Gerber. Yeah, I knew it. It took you a uh, This fellow's name is Richard Rory. I just guessed the character. <laughs> he's a hippie DJ who had a brief relationship with Jen Walters. His first appearance was Man Thing number two, uh, 1974, and he's created by Steve Gerber, based on himself. Interesting, huh? So, there you go. so remember how you said that only one person knows she's She-Hulk? Now, yeah, she's yeah, this guy figures it out. But yeah, this is her boyfriend as Jen Walters. Well, Zapper is her boyfriend as She-Hulk. That's pretty cool. I got to say, I like that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, it adds a lot of conflict and a lot of uh, shenanigans. You could right. Do it. right. It's yeah. like Three's Company type shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and they reference back to the issues where they've seen each other. She Hulk number seven, She Hulk number eight, and oh, all yeah, when he's when he's piecing it together that she's She Hulk. Uh, right. He's like, I, I've known about you being the She Hulk for some time, ever since you came out of that alley. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> the She-Hulk disappeared into. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I only suspected. But when the same thing happened again in the Florida swamp, trees got pulled down, then you show up in rags. Well, <laughs> I've been around enough weird folks to know the score. <laughs> You know, I gotta say, I am I'm watching Wonder Woman right now with Linda Carter, and she will literally be in an elevator wrestling with a bad guy. <laughs> she'll she'll exit the elevator, turn the corner, right. and just come back as Wonder Woman, and the guy will not put two and two together. It's uh, awesome. <laughs> oh, and I would be that bad guy wrestling with Linda Carter. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But yeah, like she she's She Hulk in a torn nightgown. She comes out of the alley. Dressed in a torn nightgown. <laughs> yeah, I think he pieced it together. Same torn nightgown, yeah. Good job, Steve Gerber guy. You yeah. figured it out. Uh, so then they hug, but then suddenly there's a cop at the door. Rap, rap, rap. Yeah. Knocking on the door. So she puts on a house coat. At least that's what we call it in Canada. What do you call I always call it a robe. A bathrobe? Okay, we call it a house coat. Um, so she answers the door and, uh, he's like, she's like, what's this? It's an, it's a notice of eviction. Miss Walter or Ms. Walters, your father, the sheriff assigned me to deliver it to you. He told me to make sure you knew who it came from. What an asshole, eh? Yeah. So then she's like, F this. And she like crumples it up and then she gets really pissed and she's like, screw it. And then she just turns into She-Hulk right in front of him. All bets are off now, right? Tears off the house coat slash bathrobe. And she's just got a white, her white thingy on underneath. Yeah. And then we cut over to uh, <laughs> Zapper, who uh, who drives over in in the uh, dune buggy thing, and he's like, "Oh, he feels guilty, right? Because he, oops, he kidnapped Jennifer Walters." Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, "She knows, um, she knows it's tough. I'm sure I'll be able to explain it to her." Then again, the narration says, "Then again," and then she comes out of the house of it through the door. You, you dare show your face here, little man? She Hulk. She like grabs him and like picks him up and like pulls him into the into the room, then throws him up against the wall. And she's basically pissed, right? Because she was kidnapped and almost killed. Yeah. Um, she's like, stop. She's she help- kill him. Right. Yeah, she's about Something's to punch wrong. him right in the face. Zapper would him. never do something like that. And you're no killer. I'm learning fast, Richard. So basically, yeah, she's all pissed. But then what does she do? You, uh-oh, did she punch him in the... Nope. She punches through the wall. She's like, it's no use. I can't do it. But mark my words, both of you, this will never happen again. Never. I guess she'll never get kidnapped and encased in silicon... I well, see. well, she goes on a big rant about how she can't trust people. I will never trust. I will never get close enough to anyone to be uh, betrayed. Never. Right. Yeah, so. And then Steve Gerber's like, Jenny! And then Zapper's like, She-Hulk! Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, right, because they're both dating her. Yeah, and it's implied that She-Hulk made, has made sweet, sweet love to Zapper, by the way. Ooh, yeah. How about that? And then she's like, and there's, there is no more Jenny. There's only She-Hulk now. I will never suffer the pain of metamorphosis again. I will stay the She-Hulk forever. I choose this path, the savage path. I choose my own, <laughs> my own true will. Slam. And then I love this narration at the end. There's an ominous sudden silence in the house. The air hangs heavy and still. The violence of these last few moments has sapped the strength from their bodies finally weakly from dry throats both speak what now i don't know the end next, next issue. issue to stay the she-hulk <laughs> and i just like to go on record michael to say that i have also chosen the savage path oh yeah okay yeah. so oh no i just realized so the next issue oh i was gonna say next issue is the last issue but it's not it's 25 no, no, no. yeah it goes to 25 now i want to ruin some things here for you but I skipped ahead to uh, issue 25. I wanted to see how it, end, how it ended. And so the final... So in the end, uh, She-Hulk is still She-Hulk. She's staying the She-Hulk. And she's back together with her dad. And she's with Zapper. Zapper's her boyfriend. And they're like in love. The guy who betrayed her. And sold really? her out to the scientist. Like, wow. how can you forgive that? He, be- he sold her out to these scientists. He could have killed her. But she's okay with that. She's cool with that. And she's together. But that means that Richard, Steve Gerber, she tells him, you know, oh, well, so you're out because I'm just being She-Hulk. No more Jennifer Walters. Hit the bricks there, uh, Richard. So the final page of the book of the series is a big splash page of her looking all happy with Zapper on one side, her dad on the other. They're smiling ear to ear. And then they're like, all is well that ends well. And then in like the bottom right corner, you see Richard walking away. And then there's a little dialogue box that says, well, except for Richard. (laughs) (laughs) What happened? Find this. Wait. 
<laughs> like it's like I don't know if that's specifically what it says, but that's the point. That's the intent. Yeah, and it it's, does. Except, of course, for Richard Rory. The end. <laughs> yeah, it's like so ridiculous. Wow, that is it's like, funny. <laughs> it's it's got to be the best ending in comic book history. <laughs> Fuck you, Richard Rory. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So yeah, there you go. Your first experience with the Savage She-Hulk. All right, so uh, the writer here, and the writer who crafted that wonderful final page of the series, <laughs> is uh, David Kraft, and he was born in 1952. Uh, before getting into comics, he was a rock and roll journalist. Mm. His first comics gig was as the editor of Foom. Ah, okay. Do you know, remember what Foom was, Michael? Yeah, it was Friends of Old Marvel, right? Yeah, something like that. It's Marvel's official fanzine. So. Right. And uh, he was the editor there from issue 15 in 1976 until the title ended with issue 22 in 1978. So, huh. a brief run. Seven issues or whatever. Um, but his first writing gig was on The Defenders. And he did 25 issues from 1977 to 1980. And yes. then from 1980 to uh, 1982, he did issues 2 through 25 of this here Savage She-Hulk. And he also did five issues of Captain America in 1982, so that's something. In 1983, he started the Comics Interview. Yes, I have many of those. I, that's how I know him. <laughs> and that lasted 150 issues, and it ended in 1995. But uh, tell the kids what that was. It was basically a comic book-sized uh, magazine of just, you know, newsprint pages, but it was all interviews. So usually there'd be two to three to four or five interviews with different creators you know some of them were only a few pages long some of them were like 20 25 pages long you know and they're pretty cool like at that time yeah. it was one of the biggest you know fanzines of the day for sure yeah i remember that when i was a kid i've read a couple of those mm -hmm. yeah. it's great <laughs> yeah i seem to recall buying one maybe with an interview with art adams or something but um, yeah probably was one yeah anyway um all right so there it is, Dave Kraft. Any other Dave Kraft notes? Because uh, I never, ah. I never like saw the name or recognized the name until this issue. I, I I can say that I've read some of his Defenders, and they're some of the worst comics I've ever read. But other than that, <laughs> yeah, not much to say about him. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> uh, what what'd you think about his writing here? Ooh, not great, not great at all. Uh, yeah, it's a little hit or miss. Uh, I, I think the She-Hulk stuff, like, the character She-Hulk was fine. I didn't have too much of a problem with her and the Jen Walter stuff. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just... Well, it just the plot is... Ah, it's all over the place. Like, the motivations of, like, the father, like, it's ridiculous. And... Yeah, well, we're joining midstream. Maybe they've established it over, you know, I'm sure, previous issues. But, yeah, it seems like, why is he so mad at his daughter? I don't, I don't right. know. Right. I mean, again, maybe just because I, I've read some of his stories before and I went in with low expectations, but I kind of saw all the same problems that I have with his other stuff, you know? Yeah, like the motivation for Zapper, who supposedly loves She-Hulk, and to just betray her like that makes no sense. Like, mm -hmm. why didn't he just say, hey, I have a friend who'd like to do some research on you. Maybe we can get a cure for cancer out of this if you donate some blood. You right, know, right, like right, right. But because uh, yeah. we should mention that his, these friends of his, these scientists, I don't know if we talked about this. But uh, they told him they wanted to find a cure for cancer. But what they wanted to do was make their own little mutant army. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so he could have easily, they could have easily just plotted it that way. Like, hey, they, they want to do some research on you. Uh, maybe get a cure for cancer. And she'd be like, okay, I'll donate some blood or whatever. And then when she gets there, they'd knock her out and do that stuff, you know. But right. the way they have it set up, it just makes, it makes Zapper seem like a complete jackass. And right, I can't. I can't believe She Hulk would ever forgive him for that. It's right, so right, right. Ridiculous. But um, yeah, so yeah, the motivation for the characters is a little sketchy. The dialogue, you know, yeah, whatever. The narrations in the little yellow boxes, a little uh, old school, you would say. But yeah, uh, yeah, not great, not great. But uh, I like the uh, I like the idea of, like I said, of her having the different boyfriends with different. You know, when she's Jen. You like, you like she, that? I, I do like that because it's a lot. It's an interesting little twist. Sure, yeah. It, it adds a lot of uh, conflict, you know, like potential mm -hmm. conflict. But it seems like the two guys are cool with it, you know? Yeah, which is weird, but yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> there we go. Hope for the, would it be a menage a trois? If there's, yeah, I guess there's three, but it would kind of be like a four. If there's two personalities. Uh, well, I, uh, yeah, maybe if she switches halfway through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't even want to think about it. It's getting too weird. <laughs> All right, but um, what else did I like about it? Uh, I don't know. That's about it. Um, yeah, I was definitely not a huge fan of the story. Uh, but I like the big fight. I like the big fight with the monster guy, though. Oh, yeah. Like I how mean, he absorbs her and then yeah, he punches, like, she punches her way out. That was awesome. Yeah, pretty, you know, a fairly cool villain. Like, not not bad. You know, something different. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, not horrible, but not great. Um, so the artist here is Mike Vosberg. And uh, when I was doing the research on the Vosberg, I, I'm like, oh, wait, we've done him before. Do you remember what issue Mike Vosberg has drawn of the Flea Market Fantasy? Oh, uh, no, but I, I, no, I don't remember. I didn't remember either, but then I uh, stumbled upon it. First issue special number 12, Dr. Fate. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So uh, just to recap quickly, he, uh, Vosberg was born in 1947. He did uh, issues 2 through 25 of Savage She-Hulk. He's also known for his G.I. Joe work. He did issues 9 through 19, and then issues 22 and 23. That's um, right. He also That's did right. the Sisters of Steel, I guess, for Epic Comics. Ah, I remember the sister, title. Sisterhood of Steel or something like that? Yeah, Sisterhood of Steel. I remember that. Uh, but he was also, uh, he was the guy who did the Tales from the Crypt covers on the TV show. All those mm. comic book covers. He drew them all for the TV show. Really? Huh. Yeah. So, Mike Vosberg. Yeah, the art here, uh, it's a little inconsistent. Like, uh, we mentioned... Like those scientists had very cartoony looking faces and uh, designs, right. but I actually liked how he drew She-Hulk. There's a lot of classic uh, like Marvel kind of um, poses and action shots here, um, and I liked how he drew She-Hulk. But he, I read an interview with him where he said he never felt he drew She-Hulk all that well, like in terms of making her look attractive or anything. But I don't know. I thought she looked good. Well, I think the opening page is really good. You know, yeah. Like I actually, yeah, I think the art is pretty good actually. Like, yeah, some yeah. panels are better than others, but overall, it's not bad at all. Yeah, I, I, I liked it. Uh, mm. And uh, I really did like a lot of the ways uh, he drew the She-Hulk. Like we right. pointed out, that one panel, of that close-up of her face, I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. um, her punching that monster guy, there's some good action shots in there. So, yeah, I, I had no problem with the art. I mean, it could have been, you know, better, but it was fine. Yeah, it was, it was okay. Good classic comic book art, I think. So. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, no yeah. He was never one. Of, I I know him from GI Joe. He was never one of my favorites, but he's definitely fine. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Anything else you like to point out about about Vosberg or the? Uh, or the I can only say that you know, She Hulk is one of those comics that was always kind of on my list of things to read, but I don't think I'm going to read it anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe that last page. That last page looks really good, but other than that, I yeah, know. I just. It's uh, it's interesting. I like the uh, conflict of her being Jen and She-Hulk and balancing her life and everything and that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, there's nothing too thrilling or exciting about uh, like I, I I pan through some other issues and there's yeah. nothing like and there's no other like great enemies or villains or right um, right. It, it's nothing too exciting going on in the pages of the Savage She-Hulk. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't think she really came... I mean, even though I'm not a huge John Byrne fan, she didn't really come into her own until she was done by John Byrne. Yeah, like you mentioned, he 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 took an interesting angle on it. Like, she always broke down the fourth wall, and she knew she was part of a comic book. Right. And she would comment on the artist and the writer and stuff. And uh. Yeah, like this... Yeah, and I mean... I mean, to be honest, kind of a half-baked idea from the, from the start, because the fact that she's the Hulk's cousin... And she turns into the She-Hulk, but she keeps her memories. It kind of, like, negates the whole tragic part of the Hulk. So if you're going to get rid of that, you might as well just make her funny, you know? Like they did with John Byrne. Yeah. So, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, She-Hulk. She-Hulk. Hey, later on, she kills Vision, right? And, uh, and really? She ripped Vision apart. Remember all that? Uh, no, I didn't read that. Disassembled? Didn't read it. Yeah, I tried reading it. Uh, it lasted a couple pages. The writing's terrible. Yeah, but, uh, Brian Michael but, Bendis. But there's an opening scene where like Vision comes down and like shoots out these little eggs that I don't know, Ultron eggs or something. And okay, and then She Hulk goes crazy and like just kills the Vision, just rips them apart. Oh, really? Huh. There you go. All right, so that's Savage She Hulk. All right, Michael. Next week. Next week.
We have another surprise guest from again from your side of the border. <laughs> Can you believe this? What is happening? This is All great. Right. Now, when you say my side of the border, you mean like my my group of friends or just yes? Our, I mean uh, your group of friends. All right. From your so, state, your city, probably. I don't know. Well, we had we had cousin Brandon on. Oh, if you're safe from my state, it's Larry. You got Larry. No, again? you know what? I don't even know where this person lives. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you who it is. It's Kevin Jank. All right, I was gonna say Jank because it's been a while. Yeah, Jank is in in the great state of Illinois. Oh wow, that's actually closer. Cool, kind of. Yeah, f- that's five hours away for me. How do you know him again? Uh, through the radio shows and whatnot. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. He's so he's a guess listener, what? and now he's become a contributor and a friend. Ah, oh, isn't that cool? So I gave him a choice of several DC comics, but he picked <laughs> why, the one. Why do you always bring him on for DC? He hates DC. You uh, bring him on. Uh-uh. I gave him a choice of one Marvel, and he picked the Marvel. He picked <laughs> one Marvel out of six DC, and you'll never guess what he picked. Just take a wild guess. No, wait a minute, because you did the same thing with Brandon last time. You gave him like all these DC books and then one Marvel, Quasar, that you wanted him to pick. So then you knew he was going to pick Marvel, so he picked Quasar. So guess what Guess what Kevin Jake picked. you got to guess. This is wild, okay? <laughs> well, okay, it's got to be something you like that no one else likes. He Okay, I'll just tell you. He picked this over several well-known DC properties. Are you ready for this? Yes. None other than Wolfpack by Larry <laughs> Hama. <laughs> Why are you doing this to people? I Wolfpack. think it's I think it's funny because he probably picked it because it's the only Marvel and he's probably going to be yeah. shockingly disappointed. We'll see. But I picked it because it's like, Larry Hama. But anyway. Yeah, no one else likes uh, DC. Yeah, you keep pushing DC. Well, people. no one else. Uh, there's a whole co- there's a whole industry of people that prefer DC over Marvel. You just don't <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> a whole dying industry. Yeah. <laughs> but what I uh, so this is twice now. Jank, I think. Oh no, we we let it. We let him do X Factor. We made it up to him because I remember the last time you got him to do Superman and he hates Superman. Who but who's the had, one? Oh yeah, who did Hulk? Who's the one that picked Hulk? He picked Hulk. Okay, there you go. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, we brought him on to do X Factor to make up for for all the mutants. But now we got to pick up something to make up for Wolfpack. Yeah, for those who don't remember Wolfpack, you said mentioned Larry Hammond. This was New Universe, right? No, it wasn't. No, no, it wasn't New Universe. No, this was just one of the. It was one of those weird. It was just like Dakota North, one of those weird books that just came out and then got canceled, and no one ever talks about it. <laughs> it I remember re- researching it. Um, Cause what did we talk about Larry Ham on here? Maybe from the GI Joe. Uh, yeah, we must have. Yep. But it's like a guy who gets together a group of street uh, ki- or kids and makes a little like vigilante gang out of them, right? Yeah. Like a Charles Xavier of the hood. He kind of, yeah. Kids. But it's just, it's weird though, because I, I got to admire Larry Hama because he edited Dakota North. He did this. And he also did another book. Uh, well, I don't remember what it was, but it was another book that I reviewed just recently that came out of his editorial office. And it was totally off the wall, but I can't remember what it was. But anyway, so yeah, good old Larry Hama, creator of G.I. Joe, a real American hero. And what issue of Wolfpack did you say we're doing? <sighs> Number one. All right. <laughs> yeah. But for those that, if you're listening at home, if you want to get the full story, there is a graphic novel before Number One. Oh. That you could read before this, and I'm going to read this weekend. And and did you say what year this was, like 88 or so? This or is, uh, let me click on it. Hold on, I don't know. It is, 19, oh crap, just a minute here. Jesus, Harold. Yeah, it's got to be late 80s, right? Hold on, it's gonna, I just got all these ads. Um, This is 19, holy Moses, I can't get to the <laughs> It's 1988, yes. Yeah, I nailed it. Look at that, 88, so, all right. Yep. Good times. Kyle Baker on inks, Ron Wilson on pencils. This will be fun. All right. So, yeah, you can uh, tune in every Tuesday to Flea Market Fantasy. We do a different Bronze Age comic book every week. One week I pick, one week Mike Dell picks. You can uh, you can listen to our show on um, Stitcher, Spotify, and iTunes under Comic Book Syndicate. Also on the Comic Book Syndicate Twitter feed, our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and the Comic Book Syndicate website. So until next Tuesday... Disperse!